All right, so day two of the class, we're going to focus today on the social network Google+. Let's see, day two, Google+. This is Google's social network. Their version of Facebook. Their version of Twitter. Their version of Pinterest. It's Google's social network. Google is most famous for the search engine, isn't it? For the uh, for the search, maybe for the web browser. You know, maybe the Google Chrome web browser, Google search engine, Google Maps, Google Mail, also known as Gmail. Maybe you have a Google phone. Well, if you have a Google phone, that means you have an Android. So, Google has their reach in a lot of places. Search, maps, email, phone, and now social network. And so Google invented the social network in 2012, I think, maybe 2011, after Facebook had been out several years, after Google had seen. A lot of people are kind of liking this Facebook thing. A lot of people are logging into Facebook and never logging out. A lot of people are spending a lot of time on Facebook. That's taking away market share from us at Google. So Google thought, let's make our own social network. We've got the money for it. So Google Plus Social Network. Google has integrated a lot of their properties together. When you get a brand new Android phone, it wants you to set up a brand new Google Mail account, Gmail. If you set that up, then you have access to photo, Google Photos, Google Maps, Google Search, all of that stuff. For a business, again, this class focuses on business rather than personal. For business, Google Plus is invaluable. It's tied into their services deeply. What you do on Google Plus can help you and it should not be surprising, what you do on Google Plus can help your SEO, your search engine optimization, your site ranking. If people are going to search using Google, then Google search is going to show you a variety of results, of course, and some of them may most likely also come from Google Plus. I don't have any computers left, so you can grab this one right here and that one right there at the end. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you're searching, as most people search, via Google. Google Plus is connected to it, and so um, that could help you get found. Now Google is going to say over and over that their search results are unbiased. Google is going to say you're going to get the best results according to our, our algorithm, our technique, so that your site gets found, or that you search and you'll get results that you want, but it's it's naive to think that there isn't some bias in the Google search or the Yahoo search or the Bing search that there is some um, leaning towards one thing or another. And so to use it to our advantage as a business, why not create a Google Plus account for your business? Why not build a presence for free on Google Plus to help your business get found? Here's something very tangibly. If you do go to your web browser and go to Google and search anything, like I'm going to search for uh, Mexican food, and it's going to show a bunch of results. It's going to show perhaps results that are simply text links. That's the most common. All, right, all of these text links that have been around since the beginning of the web, those kinds of links. But you're going to most likely start to see these kinds of results also. Results on a map. I'm seeing these results of Mexican food restaurants. I'm seeing them on a map. I'm seeing star ratings, directions. I want that. I want my business to appear like this. Because the one down here, yes, these are real and valid results. But this one is giving top billing. And yes, some amount of people will say, well, that's an ad. I'm not going to click on ads. 
that's not an ad. A lot of people know that, a lot of people don't know that. I don't know what the statistic is. But yes, some people will think that's an ad and some people are completely morally um, horrified by ads. So people are going to completely ignore that. Yes, a million people. But what if a million people do see here, oh, five stars, let me click. You could get all of this from Google+. Plus. That's the secret. How do you elevate yourself? How do you elevate your business from the plain old links to something more interesting and useful here? This is saying that this restaurant is closed at the moment. Well, they went in and set up their profile here and put their times to show that they're closed at this hour so you don't drive there for nothing. Then people are here giving ratings, 383 ratings, 4.2 stars, 233. 4.5, 215 ratings. That's all coming from Google Plus. Google Places, the whole Google profile system, and it's for free. So that's why I talk about Google Plus in this class right away before Facebook, even though Facebook's the big one. Facebook's the one that everyone wants to learn about, and we will, of course. But everything that we talk about regarding any social network will apply to various degrees in the other networks. When we talked about Twitter last time, we talked about hashtags. Hashtags work in Facebook. Hashtags work in Pinterest. Hashtags work in Google+. So whatever you learn in most networks, apply on every other network. There are some unique things per network, of course, which we'll talk about. But once you learn these general concepts of social media, you then apply them. So what we're going to do is create a Google+, account and it's pretty easy because if you already have uh, any Gmail account you're halfway there so I'll say Google Plus is easiest to set up with Gmail if you don't have Gmail no problem we can still set it up with any other kind of account if you do have Gmail we can use it and then I always get the question right away, should I use a personal Gmail or a business email? The answer is either or any one of them. Anyone will work. A personal Gmail, a business Gmail. Anyone will work because with one Gmail you can create and control multiple Google Plus accounts or profiles. So business or personal doesn't matter. You'll use one to create your business account. And as myself, like I said, I teach this stuff, but I'm also part of a company that we do this. We run social media for various San Diego companies. We run their Twitter. We run their Google+. We do what, what I talk about in these classes. And so personally, myself, I have my Gmail address, my personal Gmail. And I'll show you how to do all of this, of course. But I have my personal Gmail address. I log in to Google+, and I have my personal Google+, where I chat with friends and family and all of that. But then with that same personal Gmail address, for this company and that company and this company and I can manage them all from my one Gmail my one personal Gmail and that personal Gmail does not conflict with the other pages you won't see my name attached to any of those businesses you won't see my posts at showing up on any of their businesses home pages it's completely separate it's, it's safe they're not going to blend into each other and this way is a lot easier than creating a brand new Gmail for every single business. You yourself probably have one business to work with, so it's going to be easier. But uh, if you are going to work with different businesses on Google+, Plus, different businesses online, you'll see that you can create multiple accounts. You can set managers to help you manage the accounts. So it's not just myself, like I said, I've got a few other people in, the, in my company, and the people in my company have access 
to log into the Google Plus account of a particular business to make changes, to see those reviews, to reply to the bad ones, to reply to the good ones. So using Google Plus helps you stand out on a Google search. People can review your business. People can rate your business. People can get directions to your business. You don't need to if, you, if your business doesn't have a physical location, obviously, then the directions part doesn't matter to you. But the other ones are very valuable. Reviews, ratings, and such. Uh, nowadays, with so much competition in restaurants, or web design companies, or realtors, or bakeries, etc., 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 with so much competition in every single space, what's helping people to find what they're looking for are ratings. Yelp ratings, of course, are the big famous one. But guess what? Google said, hey, Yelp is also encroaching on our territory. Let's set up a way for people to do ratings on Google+. So there's ratings on Google+. Um, so Google is trying to be everything. And it, it's for free. And it behooves us then to learn how to do this and take advantage of it. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, setting up the account, do's and don'ts, tips and tricks and some of my best advice about how to use it effectively to build an audience because all of this as we talked about last time right back up to the very beginning all of social media is for marketing advertising getting the word out you have an amazing business an amazing product an amazing website but you're not getting any traffic, you're not making any sales. No one knows you exist. In the real world, there are flyers for a business, there are billboards, there are radio ads, TV ads, there's a person flipping that sign around on the corner. All of that is marketing and advertising. In the modern marketing world, it's social media. Any questions so far? Okay, um, let's go to the address. If you haven't done so yet, open your web browser and go to the address plus.google.com. And then a quick question, where did the sign-in sheet end up? Now, if you were new today, I said earlier, if you were new, you need to see me to get the registration code. Also, if you are new, uh, make sure you get your hand on that uh, pink sign-in sheet to show that you are here. But anyway, go to plus.google.com. This is our uh, online, I mean, our, our login screen. Um, we're going to see that, again, a lot of these networks have related concepts because these networks are not going to really try to upend so much things that exist, well, unless it really works, like Snapchat. Snapchat is like no other network, really. But when you look at Facebook, when you look at Twitter, when you look at um, uh, Instagram and all of that, uh, they're, they're very, very similar. Let me get that uh, sign-in sheet right here. So what I see the first thing here in Google+, Plus, um, something that I think looks a little reminiscent of a different social network. Does anyone maybe see a, 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 diff a similarity to some other social network that's been out? Pinterest. Where Pinterest, exactly. This kind of looks a little bit like <clears throat> Pinterest. And you've got these squares, you've got these pictures. It looks like you can pin these things. Well, Google di has done a, a sort of an update to their network about six months ago. 
and so some of the interface looks a little bit different. I've been using Google Plus since it first debuted to the public, like in 2000, November 2012, November 2011, sometime around there. And I like it. Uh, full disclosure, Google Plus is my favorite network. My favorite network to use for personal and business. Uh, my favorite network to use for business, if you had to choose only one, would be Facebook. We'll talk about why, of course. But for personal, I hate Facebook. Full disclosure. For personal, I don't like to use Facebook at all for any personal stuff. I just don't like it for various reasons we can get into later. But for business, I love Facebook. For personal, I love Google+. And for business, I also like Google+, Plus a lot. We will see how it can be very effective. And so I've been using it a while, and I've seen the interface change. And now if you create an account for the first time, it should have the new interface. If you have an account that you've made previously, it might have the old interface. And what we want to do is we want to see how to activate the new interface, because eventually they'll remove the old one, and then you won't be able to get around anymore. So uh, when we create this account in a moment, we will, uh, we will look at the new interface. But the first thing that we're seeing here is this concept that we're going to look at called um, collections. Google Plus Features. Um, share photos, videos, text, links just like every other network. But what's different here is they have collections and they have communities. We'll go into detail of what they are, of course collections are groups of your content based on a topic. Again, that sounds a lot like Pinterest. If you've used Pinterest, you can create various pin boards and put different items into the board to organize groups for your content based on topic. Communities are groups of people around a topic. We'll see what those nuances mean, but the cool and useful and powerful ways to use Google+. Whereas on Twitter, you tweet something, and it just goes off into the world. It goes to your followers. They see it, and then they move on. Twitter, people are very active on Twitter. Lots of stuff happens on Twitter. Your tweets will get lost. Well, you can try to hashtag them. Hashtagging on Twitter then groups them together around a topic. We talked about that last time. But still, a hashtag topic can get overwhelmed. The hashtag topic can get co-opted. It can get full. People can get distracted. So Google Plus said, let's try to do collections or communities. See if that allows people and businesses to use Google Plus more effectively than Twitter. Unique feature. Everyone starts off with a generic address. Eventually, you can claim and claim a, um, a vanity URL, a vanity address. In the beginning, we're going to have an address that's something like plus.google.com slash u12577255 really rolls off the tongue. Eventually, though, I want google.com slash Victor's Bakery. I want google.com slash PM the Interactive. I want google.com slash Southwestern College. I want a nice, short, memorable Ooh. vanity address. Well, in the beginning, everyone gets the generic one with gibberish. Um, that's to help prevent spam. Because after, I believe it's after two weeks of you using Google+, after actually setting it up and using it, when next time you log in, there'll be a message that says, claim your vanity URL, claim your short name, to prevent the spammers. Because if anyone can create a Google Plus account for free, then that means a spammer can create 10 accounts um, to send out spam or um, steal a name from a legitimate business. Well, if you create your account and you use it, 
legitimately for about two weeks or so and you put your profile picture and you put your biography and all of the things that we talked about for Twitter Google will see okay this is serious this is legitimate let's give them the ability to have their own short address the long generic address is still a valid active address but it's not going to be memorizable memorable at all so as soon as possible we want to claim that vanity address I'll show you how, of course. The reason why collections can be pretty valuable is I haven't logged into Google Plus yet, but it's already telling me, look at these things you might be interested in. Music, bird photography, yours is probably different in random tiny planets, monochrome. It's saying these are things you might be interested in. What if I am a photographer that wants to get hired to do photography. What if I create a collection? We'll see how to do it. Well, what if I create a collection about wildlife photography? And the first thing that people could see when they come to Google Plus is my photos. Uh, don't click follow, but click on the name of a, of a collection to see what's inside of it. And so here I'm seeing all of these photos. So Adrian created this collection sharing his wildlife photography animals domestic zoo animals and wild animals sharing photos 44 weeks ago three days ago he's sharing his content he could have the goal of simply uploading his photos to show them off he could have the goal to upload his photos as a way to get attention and fame for himself traffic to his website, getting hired as a photographer, whatever his goal is. Remember we talked about goals last week also. What's the goal? What's the point of you using social media? Trying to get traffic, trying to make sales, trying to get phone calls. What's your goal? He's got nearly 32,000 people following that. 32,000 people are paying attention so that every time he uploads a new picture, potentially 32,000 people see it. Last week, we talked about the 1% goal, didn't we? Anyone remember that? The 1% goal of social media, which is 1% of your followers are the most serious, the most active, the most prone to follow through, the most that will probably buy your product because it's very easy to give a like and it's easy to give a reply and it's easy to retweet or share but suddenly the mouse gets very difficult to use to press buy or to press subscribe or to press call or to do some sort of action that is more valuable to you business-wise so our goal is one percent of your followers are the ones that are going to be the most serious to actually buy or call you or subscribe to you or visit your website, or read your poetry, or see your your paintings, whatever you're trying to do online. What's 1% out of 32,000? No math majors in here? 32,000 times 0 0.1. 320. 320 people. I could make pretty good money, and I could perhaps have a good business on 320 people, but that came from 32,000. Yes, the 1% is a very, very, very low, actually a very, very high threshold. But that's realistic. It could be that your content is so amazing that you're more like 10% success rate, 50%. Even 50% out of 31,000 is 15,000. You still lose. You have a lot of attrition. You lose a lot. So that's why everyone wants to get a lot of, every business wants to get a lot of followers and likes on social media to build an audience. All of social media is for marketing, getting the word out. Build an audience. The more you have, the more serious followers you have.
Google Plus is really, after their recent update, they're really promoting collections. We saw that right away as soon as I logged, as soon as I went to the Google Plus homepage. Look at all these collections. And I don't believe there's like any official documentation that we can look up about how do I get promoted on the front page of Google like this. There might be, but it's most likely proprietary trade secrets. And every time I refresh this, I get a new set of people or businesses that appear here getting free promotion on the home page. I want that. Well, create a collection as we'll see how to. Start to add content and build a following. And then popularity breeds popularity. And maybe your collection will appear here for the hundreds of millions of people that use Google+. Plus. Yes? Um, I'm looking at create collections on my own Google+, Plus, and I'm seeing collections of people that I follow. Mm -hmm. So that's what, you know, if you're following people, or you get people to follow you, then your collection will show up. You're exactly. They've chosen to follow. If you do click the follow button, that means I want to see that. Yeah. So that's that's what we want. We want people to follow us. You can follow people too. We'll see why. And then that hopefully gets helps you get that um, popularity to get you more popular and more followers. So you'll you'll see some paper. You'll see some people, some businesses. Um, And this helps to get your content found. How many of you currently have a Gmail account? Okay. How many of you currently have a Google Plus account? All right, for those of you that raise your hand, how many of you is it a business Google Plus account? And you might not know, so that's okay. I'm going to cover all of that because um, your when you if you get an Android device right away you get a free Gmail account and so uh, it's gonna be a personal one we want a business one last week for Twitter I had mentioned that to Twitter there's no difference between personal and business accounts So Twitter no difference between personal profile and business page. Now I'm going to try as most often to use the right terminology, but these terms sometimes are so generic. I easily say profile or page um, interchangeably, but technically um, profile and page are different, as I'll explain here, because Google Plus, Facebook, Pinterest, and I think a few others do differentiate between a personal and a business account. I don't believe Instagram, I have to double check that, I don't believe Instagram doesn't differentiate. But Google Plus, Facebook, Pinterest do, yes, differentiate between profile and page. Personal profile, business page. That's how that's what the difference is. And I can easily accidentally say personal page or business profile. But I want to try to remember that the difference internally really is personal profile, business page. We will see that terminology as we're switching between the accounts. It'll tell you, here's your Google Plus profile. That should be your indicator that it's personal. Here's your Google Plus page. That should be your indicator that it's a business page. And with Google Plus and Facebook and Pinterest, you want the business version. You want the business page for business. Because if you don't have it, technically, it's a terms of service violation. When you create an account, that thing that we that we don't read but we click agree to, in there it's going to say you're going to use Twitter appropriately for business or or personal. You're going to use Google Plus appropriately for business or personal. It's their terms of service. They then, if you violate it, can shut it down. That's just the way it is. So if you created a Facebook page, 
but you created it as a personal profile and you're using your business the wrong way on Facebook, technically they could shut it down because you violated the TOS in terms of service. And as I said last week, a very quick way to tell, does your Facebook have friends or does it have likes? If I've got 79 friends, that means it's personal. Whoops, I did it wrong. If you've got 47 likes, you did it right. You're, you have a business Facebook page with likes. If you've got it with friends, you didn't do it right. They can be converted. We'll talk about that when we talk about Facebook. But you want the right one so that you don't get shut down. You want the right one because it has more features. It has business-friendly features. For example, uh, analytics, also known as insights, also known as stats. When you've got one of these business accounts, it'll tell you. You had this, num this many number of impressions and this many number of conversions. You had this amount of traffic on this day and time. You don't get these sorts of stats for a personal account. Why does a personal why does a person need to know the most effective time for them to post? But a business needs to know that to reach an audience. For personal, it's just for friends, between friends. Who cares what time I post? My friends will see it. But for a business, based on my stats, I should be posting on Fridays at 3 p.m. I should be posting on Sunday mornings. I figure that out once I see my statistics, and I, you don't get these kinds of statistics on personal. Remind me, did I mention impressions and conversions last week? No? Okay. Impressions. When someone sees your content, conversions, when someone interacts, with your content. We didn't get to it last week because like I said, I could teach us I could teach a three month I, I, a four week class on each one social network. So we didn't get to cover everything I wanted to about Twitter yesterday, but make a note of this. With Twitter, if after you create your Twitter account and you go to analytics.twitter.com, that's where you go look at your stats. That's where you go look at all of your most effective tweets, who's following you, what are their favorite uh, topics, and all of this great stats. Once you create your account, you go to that address, you'll have access to it. We didn't get to it, but you can check it out. Yes? Um, most likely not. The class has been set up that it's an overview of all the networks because uh, there's so much to talk about and then a person can figure out what's the best for them. Maybe Twitter is going to be very very good for one company but terrible for another. So I have to do an overview to see what everyone can see and figure out what's best for them. Question? Yeah, so I apologize if you already mentioned this. Um, for the business page, if I log in under my business email, my Gmail, mm -hmm. does that mean that everything I do under that is under, because when I click like profile or anything it comes up with my name, not Business name. Yeah, exactly. It's not obvious sometimes, even though I'm using my business Gmail, it's still, unless you do it the way we're about to, it's it still might treat it as a personal account. You're going to show us. Yeah. Okay. Question. How is um, uh, interacting defined? Is that when they like, actively like it? or? Yes, if someone uh, sees your post and clicks a like, clicks a reply, clicks a share, clicks the link, they didn't just look at it and move on. They interacted with any sort of action. That's as far as it can tell you here, because it can tell you that led to a direct sale. We would need to use other tools to further track these conversions. But in, in very basic terms, the networks can tell you, people saw your tweets a thousand times, and you got seven clicks. Well, seven is better than nothing, but it's not as good as you know 100. That's when then the next one comes in here, CTR, which is click-through rate, which is a basic formula of conversions divided by impressions. So if I have 
234 impressions. So potentially 234 people saw my tweet, my Google Plus post. And then I've gotten 44 conversions, 44 interactions, 44 clicks. Well, doing the math here, 44 divided by 234 is 18.8%, an 18.8% success rate. And that's good. Nearly, you know, nearly 20% result out of my efforts. Uh, oftentimes, these numbers, though, are much, much lower. I might have 230 impressions, but then I've got 12 conversions. I've got seven conversions. Again, seven divided by 234 is going to be a really small number, 1%, 2%, whatever. It goes back to that 1% again. That the most ardent of your followers is very small, unfortunately, for most of us. Yes, sometimes you'll be a superstar, 3%. You're going to be a perhaps a superstar and maybe have really good content, really good products, really good videos, and maybe it'll be much higher. But it's very common to be in the 1%, 1.5%, 2%, 3%, 50% success rate. You're amazing. You're, you're, you're really reaching an audience. Or you're spending a lot of time and effort and possibly even money to reach more people. Google Plus, having a business page will allow us to see this as well. Will allow us to see the uh, um, impressions, conversions, and all of that. That's again why you want a business account. More features. Let's say check this side for your Twitter stats. And because actually Twitter doesn't really differentiate as a personal account on Twitter, you can still use this and to see how effective you are in sharing your cat pictures. So most of us seem to have a Gmail address. What we're going to do is, let me explain the general concept, then you can decide what to do, because there's always a little speed bump when I teach this part. There's always a speed bump in creating the account, especially when there's the difference between personal and business. If you have a Gmail address and it's personal, go ahead and use it. We will use it to then create a business page. Or if you've got a business Gmail, use it. It will still most likely create it, want to create a personal one, personal profile, but then we'll use it to create a business page. Or you can create a brand new account right now, a brand new Gmail, a brand new Google account. You can do that, either personal or business. And then I have to show you, any way you log in here, then I have to show you how do we get to set up business pages. Because Google Plus is going to assume most people want to use this for personal. Just like when you go to Facebook and create a brand new page, it's going to assume you want to use this for personal, not for business. You have to go a different route for business. Pinterest, same way. So you have to decide here. On the top right corner, click Sign In, and then Decide. Sign in with your personal Gmail, sign in with your business Gmail, or create a brand new account if you'd like to do that in class at the moment. You can do it at home, of course. Play back the video, do it at home if you'd like, if you don't want to use our public computers. I don't believe, I don't remember if I said it last week, but our computers have deep freeze. It has protection that if you use our computers and you forget to log out, as soon as I turn off the computers, it, it erases everything. So if you don't want to use your personal info on a public lab, again, we have the protection of deep freeze. That shouldn't be a problem. But go ahead and sign in or sign up. Take a moment to do that, and then we'll, and then we'll proceed. If anyone is having any trouble, call me over. Again, I can't show every single part of the sign-in process. This one's a little bit harder to teach. But once we've signed in or signed up, then I'll show you what we need to do.
one real quickly. If any of you log in and then a little pop-up appears that says, would you like to try the new Google Plus? Mm -hmm. I would say yes, because eventually they're going to remove the old Google Plus, so you might as well use the new one. If you click no thanks, I'll show you where to activate it in a moment. Is that If it's asking you about connecting your address book and all of that, just skip everything. You don't have to put any personal information. Again, we're not going to use it for personal, we'll use it for business. This one looks like it's a, um, a personal page because it adds SEC or profile questions of um, gender and then. Can you click over here? This might be a quick way to tell. Okay. Oh, profile. Okay. Profile means personal. Oh, okay. This is page, it's a business page. You will see how to work with business pages. It's just the Okay. So there's not a way to just keep it over here. I think there is, but I'll also show the spot where our help system is at. Oh, okay. Here you just want to click upgrade, you don't have to put anything personal, just click upgrade. Okay. Yeah. 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 
bottom right here, and then you make any So now we've got the new plus and minus. So we just so this is what you require. So you find the address of plus, dot two, dot two. questions so again it's often a little difficult to teach this part about creating an account everyone's a little bit different we were able to do it on Twitter relatively easy but Google Plus honestly sometimes this creation process is a little difficult for some of you I had to say okay now select continue anyway and just skip this, skip that. But um, hopefully eventually you get to some kind of screen that looks like this. Uh, notice in my case my picture is on the top right because this is my personal profile. Most likely you have a personal profile too. We don't want that. We want to use the business page. So um, if you click on the icon on the top right corner you may or may not get what I get. If you don't get what I get I'll explain. What I get is my picture, and it says Google Plus Profile. And remember, profile means personal. Below my personal page, I have personal profile, I get all these Google Plus pages. These are all of the pages of the various companies I help manage. 
So you probably do not have this because you have to set up one business page first. And then what you'll be able to do is click on your icon at the top here and switch between businesses. You don't have that yet. It assumes you want to use it as just a person. So we don't need to use it as a person at all. If it asks for your birthday and all of that, you don't have to really fill that in. If it asks you for your high school and all of that, don't worry about putting anything personal at all. We're not going to use it for that purpose. But we need an account to log into it, and then, once I show you how, we're going to then simply switch to the appropriate business and then manage that business. So what we need to do first is, in order to get this business page, go to the address business.google.com. After you've created your your account, now go to business.google.com. So some notes here. Uh, main login is plus.google.com business management pay, uh, screen is business.google.com Most people don't need that business.google.com screen because they're not a business. They're a regular person that wants to look at something interesting or keep up to date or whatever in regular Google+. But there's a business portal for those of us that have a business. Let me show you what's here because, again, most likely yours looks a little bit different because it's, it's, uh, it's not set up yet. Um, a little help thing popped up here. You may or may not see it. Don't worry about it. But here's what I see. Again, I'll explain it and what we need to do. Um, here's all of these businesses that I help manage that have a location, that have an address, a physical location. And it shows it on top here. Manage your business page that has a location. Some of these businesses that I work with don't have a location but they're a brand so then I have brand pages where I can manage them that they don't have a physical location you should see on the top left corner a little navigation menu if you click those three lines again it may be different Mine says all locations create a business account and support. Before we do anything, click support. The help screen pops up. Yeah, a lot of do-it-yourself help. But if you scroll down to the bottom here, live chat, email, phone number. There is a real phone number that you can call a real person at Google Plus and get a real answer. And I've used it. I've been at the business of a client at 11 p.m. and called them up with this system and they fixed the issue. You know, I've been doing this social media stuff for several years, but there's always going to be some problem that is kind of advanced. They have a tech support that you can call 24 hours a day. Uh, you would go in here, fill in your address, what's your problem, and they'll call you back, and it works. So you find that in the business.google.com screen up on the little menu under support. It's there. It's a little hidden, but it's there, and you can get a real person to help you on the phone. There's a couple of ways to do this, so it's always it's going to depend on how you you have this. Um, actually, do you guys see something like this or do you see a map right away? Yeah. Yeah, if you go one like that, click start now. If you've got the three squares, just wait there long as you've got the map. Okay, if you've got the map, you need to decide are you going to build a Google Plus business page that has a physical location? That's why it's showing you the map. 
So if you do have a physical location, you want to type in your address there to claim your address. If you don't have a physical location and it's giving you a map, you want to click on the icon the three lines at the top left, and there will be all locations. Click on that. In terms of service, just click on authorized to manage. Again, I can't show that exactly on my screen because my already been set up. Continue.
so this isn't, uh, for some reason, this isn't working exactly the same for everyone. What I want to do then is, um, if this worked for you, then we'll proceed. But if it didn't, we're going to take a break soon to try to figure it out. But what I'm trying to do here, if you have the ability, either under location or brand page, there's a little plus sign add a brand page, add a business. If you don't see it, again, we're going to take a break soon to hopefully figure this out because it looks like they changed something again recently. But if I was trying to create a Google Plus page for my company that didn't have a physical location, that would be a brand. If I did have a physical location, it would be under location. And then it would have me claim a location on a map. That's why I would get of a map. But uh, for some reason they might have changed things and I can't quite find a screen that looks like this. So we'll take a break in a moment. If you see the brand pages and I try to add it, this is when some of you might see put the name of your page, put your address, and then on the next screen you saw the, the um, maybe a verification or something like that. So again, this is always complicated to teach sometimes. So we're gonna take a break try to proceed based on what I've been showing you and create either the location or the brand page. Then when we go, come back, hopefully everyone's got a page to work with and then I'll show you how it works. It's 7.17, we'll take a 10 minute break, 7.27. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print the syllabus or anything, but try to figure this out, call me over if you're having trouble, and then we'll use it right after we've got it set up.